From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Wake you up, Johnny? Oh, Garcia, no, just finished breakfast. Oh, you special investigators do live. Suppose that insurance company of yours could put me on expense account? Maybe, if you found that hundred grand worth of stolen furs. Just a matter of time, Johnny. Now you're talking like a police lieutenant. How soon can you come down here to headquarters? What's up? Has the watchman talked? Crispin? No, he's still in a coma. But I want to know some more about that kid you mentioned on the phone last night. Petty money? Yeah. Well, I... I don't know. That was told to me in confidence. Look, Johnny, I'm going to talk to you like a policeman for a minute. A man named Weller was knifed to death last night. You told me yourself his death is probably tied in with that warehouse robbery. Another man is dying at Queen of the Angels. So, confidence or no confidence, I want to know about that kid. All right, Garcia. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Los Angeles, California... To the Home Office Mono Guarantee Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Silver Blue Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 10, $1.45. Taxi from my hotel to the police headquarters office of Lieutenant Garcia. The early morning fog was starting to lift and the city sprawled beneath a slate gray sky. The filtered sun should have softened things, but didn't. Gray sun, gray world, drab and dreary. And a case to match. Teenagers, not a gang of hardened criminals. A bunch of wild kids who'd broken into a warehouse and stolen 80 fur coats, silver blue mink. A night watchman had been slugged and lay dying in the hospital. And a lunchroom owner named Red Weller had been stabbed to death the night before. So it couldn't be called kid stuff. That term doesn't apply to murder. Run those four cards through, Joe. See what you can make on them. Thanks. Now come on into the office, Johnny. This madhouse out here gets you frazzled before you know it. Oh, you police detectives have it pretty soft, Garcia. That's news to me. Teletypes, photo files, record cards, crime labs. How'd you like to try working alone? On your expense account, I could suffer the hardship. Now let's go in here. Have a seat, Johnny. Thanks. Yeah, did I put the fear of the Lord in you on the phone? Oh, you were real impressive. Well, the chief was breathing down my neck. Well, then I'll stop trembling. Getting aside, Johnny, I've got to know just how that Monte boy figures in this. Did I say he even figured in it at all? No, you just wanted some information on him. But he figures all right. You didn't come out here from Hartford to look up the nephew of an old friend. Oh, I've done crazier things at times. He's got a record. Did you know that? No. Petty stuff, no convictions. Huh. Gang brawls, auto-pilfering, vandalism, intoxication. Interrogative attitude, sullen, hostile, antisocial. Yeah, that's quite a nephew you've got, Johnny. I like she with the family. What's the story? How did you get onto this kid? Look, amigo, I made a promise on this. I hate to break it. It's murder, Johnny. <sighs> this kid's sister worked for Red Weller in that lunchroom across the street from the warehouse... Her name is Carla Monty. She's five years older than he is. They live together. Their parents are dead. So? So I put some pressure on her, and she told me she thought her brother Eddie might know something about the robbery. She took me to a pool room to meet him. How was he supposed to have known about it? Hearsay? No, no. She admitted later that she suspected him of being mixed up in it himself. Things he'd said, the way he acted. She asked me to help her try to keep him out of trouble. I think he's already in trouble, Johnny. Yeah, so do I. And I think she does, too. What did he have to say when you talked to him in the pool hall? Several things, but they added up to two words. Get out. When I wouldn't, he did. Hmm. Why do you think Red Weller was killed, Johnny? Well, I think those kids used his lunchroom as a lookout post to spot the prowl car that was patrolling that area. As soon as it passed, they pulled the job. The figure's all right. I think Red realized it when he thought back and knew who the kids were. I think that's what he was going to tell me. So they found out what he was up to and knocked him off to shut his mouth. Yeah, it ends up, Garcia. Oh. Now, tell me about her. Carla? Hmm. What's to tell? She's just a girl, like millions of others. Decent, hardworking, and real sweet. 
But there's something about her, something special. I, I don't know what, I don't know the words to use, but... Well, it's there, you feel it. And she's kept it somehow, in spite of everything. I guess I know what you mean. Do you? I told you once, Johnny, I grew up in that district. I know how rough it is. Well, maybe it's even worse for a girl. It is. I know. I had a sister. Oh, I didn't know that. She was a lot like this girl Carla once. Then the district got to her, and she got to be more like Carla's brother. Uh, what happened to her? One to five. Possession of narcotics. A couple of other pretty rough charges. She... She died in Tehachapi Prison seven years ago. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Garcia. Yeah. I don't want to see this girl, Carla, hurt any more than you do, Johnny. Maybe the hurt will break her, make her lose that something special. But I've still got to pick up her brother and bring him in for questioning. Expense account item 11, $1.90. Taxi to the Weller lunchroom to see Carla Monte. Lieutenant Garcia had a police detail checking known fences and borderline dealers specializing in furs. But so far, none of those contacted had been approached by any member of the warehouse gang. Albert Chrisman, the night watchman who had been slugged during the robbery, was still in a coma, unable to talk. So Carla remained my best, in fact, my only lead to the case. The lunchroom was closed. I paid off the taxi, walked three blocks to Carla's apartment house, climbed the stairs, and knocked on her door. Yes? Who is it? Johnny Dollar. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, all right. Just a moment. Come in, Johnny. What were you expecting? A major invasion? I don't know. I don't know what I'm expecting. Easy, Carla. Easy. It's not the end of the world. Eddie didn't come home last night. Oh. I tried, Johnny. I tried to be a mother and father both to him. What did I do wrong? Well, that's the kind of question that doesn't always have an answer. Have you got a drink in the house? Have have I what? Got anything to drink? Well, there's some brandy, I think. All right, get it. Well, I don't know if it's a good brand or it not. It doesn't matter. Bring two glasses. Pour out a couple of stiff ones. No, I, I don't... Go ahead that. and pour them, two of them. Well, all right. Is this a snapshot of Eddie when he was younger? Yeah. He was in junior high school then. It was taken at summer camp when he won a medal for swimming. And that was the only year I could afford to send him. Here you are, John. Thanks. All right, here's a go. Oh, I don't think Now drink it. All of it. All right. <coughs> Good. You needed that. Where do you think he is, Johnny? What's happened to him? Carla, you're going to have to face it sooner or later, and I kind of think now is the time. What do you mean? You've been worried sick for fear your brother would get into some kind of trouble. And you had reason to worry. It's finally happened. No. He's in trouble, all right. Plenty of trouble. You're not the only one looking for him. Who else is who do you mean, Johnny? The police. There's an APB oh. out. They want him for questioning in connection with a robbery and with the murder of Red Weller. Oh, no. Eddie wouldn't kill anyone. Maybe not, but somebody did. Some member of the gang that robbed the warehouse. And it looks very much as if Eddie is a member. Yes. I suppose he is. Now, look, Carla. Is there anything you haven't told me about the robbery, I mean? No, no. I, I was just suspicious, that's all. Because if there is, let's have it. It's too late to protect him now. The sooner he's taken into custody, the less likelihood of his getting any even deeper. He was out that night. He didn't come home until almost morning. I was worried about it, but I knew it wouldn't do any good to ask him. Do you know who was with him that night? No. Who would be the most likely ones to go along on a deal like that? Any of them. Any of those he's been running around with lately. Any idea where they hang out mostly? Well, just those two places I took you to last night. That drive-in and the pool hall. Look, if they did pull that robbery, where do you suppose they take the furs? Well, I don't know. Does Eddie have a car? No, but some of the other boys do. Uh-huh. Carlo, would you mind if I look through Eddie's room? No, I don't mind. It doesn't matter. I guess nothing much matters now. It's gone so far that... Wait. It's Eddie. He has his own key. All right. Take it easy now. Be careful, Johnny. Say, so you're gonna have... What the devil are you doing here? Working for you, Eddie. Yeah? What for? I think you know. Eddie... Eddie, you've got to give yourself up. Shut up. Because I got you to thank for this jam. 
There's an insurance dick comes around, romances you up a little, and you sell me right down the river. That's not true. How'd you know you were in a jam, Eddie? I got friends in this neighborhood. They keep me posted. Did the same friends tell you Red Weller was about to make a deal to talk? You're whistling in the dark, Dollar. Maybe. I imagine Garcia will find out, though, when he gets you down to headquarters. Get your hand off that phone. Oh, so you've got a gun. Eddie, Eddie, don't. Please. Keep out of this. Move back against that wall, Dollar. Put your hands flat against that wall. You're keeping there. Give me some clothes, Carla. Come on, make it fast. What are you going to do, Eddie? I said give me some clothes. All right, Eddie. You're wrong, though. You're making a big mistake, Eddie. It's no use running. You'll only... A... Eddie. What's the matter? Down there in the street. A police car just pulled up. You're lying. There we are, Dollar. I to kill you, Carla. You're the one that brought him here. I'm trying to let him trap me. I think I'll pull a bullet on you before I leave. You fire one shot and you won't have a chance. They'll be in here before you can get out of the hallway. You better make up your mind, Eddie. Well, you've still got time. Stay where you are, Dollar. Don't try to come after me. Eddie, please. Give yourself up, Eddie. Stop him, Johnny. I'm afraid it's a little late. Why did you let him go? There was no choice, Carla. He'd have killed you if I'd moved. Well, you'd better give me that list of his friends. The police will want it. Heaven help him. Yeah. That's about all that can help him now. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a police net tightens and traps a frightened rat. A boy sobs in a jail cell. And an innocent man dies quietly in his sleep. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>